So hey there, I'm Tracy Walker, I'm one of the Emory Pediatrics residents, and today we're going to be talking about how to read a chest x-ray, and just the basics. So I found this picture and I put it in the presentation because not only is it funny, but unfortunately it also demonstrates how many people interpret x-rays. They tend to pull it up, take a glance at it, and then just read the radiologist report and agree with whatever it says. So it's really important to be able to have a systematic approach to interpreting x-rays so those long nights when there's not a radiologist in house you'll actually be able to read the x-ray. There are numerous different methods of mnemonics that people use in order to read a chest x-ray. The most important thing is that whatever method you're using is strategic. And I'm a sucker for mnemonic, so I like to use the alphabet mnemonic, which is the A, B, C, D, E mnemonic. So here's a wonderful diagram that helps to orient you to where things are located anatomically on a chest x-ray. So just to point out a few of the important structures, for the cardiac wise, here we have the right atrium, the left ventricle, here's the left atrium, and on the left side here we have the aortic arch, and then for primary airway structures, we've got the trachea, the right main stem bronchus, and the left main stem bronchus. So the objectives of this talk are to show you a systematic and easy to remember method in order to evaluate chest x-rays. And I use the A, B, C, D, E method, which I'll explain further. And then at the end, I have two x-rays of common pediatric findings that we will evaluate together. So the very first thing you need to do is you need to realize what you are looking at. You need to make sure that you're looking at the, the correct patient. You need to know what type of film you're looking at, if you're looking at an AP or a PA chest x-ray or a lateral view. And it's also important to know the history of the patient, especially if they've had any cardiac or pulmonary surgeries and the indication for getting the chest x-ray. A stands for airways. When evaluating the airway, it's important to look at the trachea, to evaluate the right and the left main stem bronchus, and then to evaluate the lung field. When evaluating the lung field, it's important to evaluate for infiltrates, masses, air bronchograms, pneumothoraces, and fluid in the fissures. It's also important to make sure you do not have a foreign body, like a coin, stuck in the airway. So B stands for bones and soft tissues. When evaluating the bones, you look for symmetry, fractures, osteoporosis, or metastatic lesions. In pediatrics in particular, we pay close attention to the clavicles and to the ribs to evaluate for fractures. When evaluating the soft tissues, it's important to evaluate for edema or subcutaneous air. So C is for cardiac, so you're going to be evaluating the heart as well as other vascular structures. When evaluating the heart, you need to be checking the size the shape, and the silhouette. When evaluating the size of the heart, you'll be looking specifically for cardiomegaly, so you'll compare the diameter of the heart to the thoracic diameter. In adults and older children, we say that the anterior cardiac diameter should be no more than 50% of the thoracic diameter. In neonates, we say that the cardiac diameter is allowed to be 60% of the thoracic diameter. And here you can see this cardiac diameter is definitely less than half of the thoracic diameter. When looking at the shape of the heart, you want to make sure that the right ventricle, the left ventricle, and the left atrium that we showed earlier where those are located anatomically, that those look appropriate. And you want to make sure that you do not have a boot-shaped heart or a heart that looks like a ball on a string that are concerning for cardiac abnormalities. When evaluating the cardiac silhouette, you want to make sure that the margin should be sharp so that you do not have an infiltrate or atelectasis obscuring the margins of the heart. When evaluating the vascular structures, the most important thing is to evaluate the aortic knob, which should be located on the left. A right-sided aortic arch can sometimes be asymptomatic, but can other times be associated with vascular rings. D is for a diaphragm. When evaluating the diaphragms, you need to evaluate the position. The right is usually slightly higher than the left due to the liver and the shape. The diaphragms will be flat in a hyperinflated state, such as an asthmatic or an adult with COPD. When evaluating the diaphragms, it's also important to evaluate the costophrenic angles. The costophrenic an angles should be sharp. A blunted costophrenic angle gives you concern for a pleural effusion. 
And E is a broad category that basically covers everything else in the chest x-ray that's not covered in the A, B, C, D part. So although you may only be getting a chest x-ray to evaluate the lung field or the cardiac size, you have to evaluate every part of the chest x-ray because you're responsible for anything that's seen on that film. So this everything else category includes evaluating things such as the position of ET tubes, central lines, feeding tubes, the presence of any surgical hardware, chest tubes, pacemakers, etc. The list goes on. As we all know, children are not just small adults, so there's certain things that you need to consider when evaluating a chest x-ray in a child versus an adult. One of the things that you need to evaluate for is for the thymus or the thymic shadow. The thymus can be visualized in the right upper area of the chest, and we call that on an x-ray the sale sign. It can be confused with an enlarged heart, atelectasis, or pneumonia. Another thing to take in consideration is that chest x-rays show the best quality on an inspirational film. However, smaller children are unable to follow commands to do an inspirational film, so sometimes you'll get an expirational film, which can make the heart appear enlarged. And you can see that here in this example of a chest x-ray on a neonate, the heart appears very large in this expirational film as compared to the inspirational. So in review, there are numerous different methods that you could choose to analyze a chest x-ray. I choose to use the ABCDE method. The A is for airways and lung fields. The B is for bones and soft tissues. The C is for cardiac. The D is for diaphragm. And the E is for everything else. So now it's time for some practice. Okay, so we're going to do two short examples. So this is our first one. So this looks like a small child. We're going to call him Billy. And we are looking at an AP view of the chest. So A, in evaluating the airways, it appears that his trachea is appropriately midline. You can see his right main stem and his left main stem. When evaluating the lung fields, um, do not see any infiltrates, do not see any masses, does appear that he has a few little air bronchograms, do not see a pneumothorax, and do not see any fluid in the fissures. When evaluating the bones, um, the bones appear symmetric, do not see any fractures, do not any, see any signs of osteoporosis. When evaluating the cardiac size, it appears that the cardiac size is about... 50 to 60 percent of the chest, which is normal in this young child. And when evaluating the diaphragms, they're both nice and rounded. The right is a little more elevated than the left, which is to be expected, and both of the costophrenic angles look sharp. And then when you get to the E for everything, it appears that there's no ET tube, there's no feeding tubes, there's no chest tube. However, there is this circular mass that appears on the chest x-ray, which is actually in the esophagus. And how can we tell that it's in the esophagus? So on an anterior view of the chest, when looking at a coin or a rounded object, if it's in the trachea, you will actually see just the edge of the coin. It'll just be a straight line called point end, and that's because the coin slips through the vocal cords. However, if it's in the esophagus, you'll see the full rounded part of the coin as apparent in this picture. Okay, for our second example, we have a little three-year-old named Molly. She's coming in with fever and cough. So air for airway, the trachea appears midline, the right and left main stem bronchus appear normal. When evaluating the lung fields, it does look like she has a right lower lobe consolidation that's blunting the right diaphragm. Um, do not see any pneumothorax. When evaluating the bones, do not see any fractures, any signs of osteoporosis, no signs of edema on soft tissue. When evaluating cardiac, her heart size appears less than 50%, the size of her thoracic diameter. Her, aor her aortic notch is on the right. And then when evaluating diaphragms, you can see the left diaphragm well with a clear costophrenic angle. However, on the right, the right diaphragm is blunted by the right lower lobe consolidation. And then for E, for everything else, I do not see any ET tubes, any feeding tubes, any chest tubes, any pacemakers. So this is an example of a lobar pneumonia. All right, that's the end. Thanks for listening.